Good evening, friends. I suppose poets are made up of words, and the words keep beading, forming necklaces of poetry whenever the poet is ecstatic, desperate, sad, or annoyed. Warm greetings from India. On behalf of Literary Warrior Group, Nivedita and I welcome our dear poets and viewers who are either watching us live or shall watch us later. It is always a pleasure to have you. Let me begin with short introductions of our uh, esteemed poet, Dr. Minakshi Mohan, whom you can see just next to me on the window, is an educator, art critic, children's writer, painter, and poet. She has taught at universities in Chicago, Boston, and, and more recently for Towson University in Maryland. She has published widely in this area and presented numerous papers and workshops. Her book reviews, art critiques, interviews, stories, and poems regularly appear in different journals and anthologies. She is on the editorial team for Inquiry in Education, a peer-reviewed journal published by National Louis University, Chicago, Illinois. Minakshi is the recipient of Panorama International Award and the Setu Award for Excellence in Literature. Welcome, Minakshi ji. Now let me move on to Arindam Roy. Arindam Roy is a journalist with 40 years of expertise. He is the founder and editor-in-chief of Different Truths and Kavya Kumbh Publishing Consultant. He has co-written 10 chapters and six national and uh, international coffee table books, authored four times group CTBs, and published four international poetry anthologies with three more in various stages. He has participated in several international and national literary events. He co-authored a novel, Reverse Run Back, which I happened to read. Now, our next participant, Sunil Sharma ji, who is currently based in Toronto, Canada. Sunil Sharma ji has published 26 creative and critical books, joint and solo. He's a winner of, among others, the Globe Award, Golden Globe Award 2023 and Nisim Award for Excellence for his novel, Minotaur. His poems were included in the prestigious UN project, Happiness, The Delight Tree an anthology of contemporary international poetry 2015. He's also the editor of the monthly Setu journal English. Welcome Sunil ji. Moving on to Saira. Saira Ranj is the director of Bahrain Writer Circle and the founder of Creative. Saira brings art to life through various modes, namely visual art, the written word, public speaking, and improv. Her profile includes being a columnist with the UAE publication, being featured in 101 Artistic Toastmasters in the world, a recipient of the single voice winner in poetry, and having sold her first oil portrait at the age of 14. Marvelous, marvelous. Then moving on to my friend Nivedita, whom I fondly call as Nivi. Award-winning author Nivedita Roy is a teacher by profession, bilingual poetess and writer. She resides in the kingdom of Bahrain and belongs to Lucknow. She is the author of three solo books in English and Hindi. She has co-authored 21 anthologies till date. Her poems, articles are published in many newspapers, e and websites all over the world. She organizes poetry and talk shows often on this page. That is uh, Neelam Saxena page. Over Thank to you, you Neelam, for such wonderful words for all of us. I welcome on your behalf and my behalf all the guests here. And it is time for us to introduce the beautiful, lovely, generous host of ours today. Neelam Saxena Chandra has authored seven novels, nine short story collections, 38 poetry collections, and 15 children's books. She's a bilingual author, writing in English as well as Hindi. More than 2,000 of her poem stories have been published in various journals, anthologies, magazines. She holds three records with the Limca Book of Records 2015 for being the author, having the highest number of publications in a year in English and Hindi. She has won several international and national awards she was listed in Forbes India as one of the most popular 78 
authors in 2014. And something she always misses adding is she has this wonderful habit of always not only reaching on top alone. She gathers a whole lot of newbie writers and I have been under her mentorship and she has been such a sweetheart. I hand you back the mic now, my darling. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nivedita. Uh, no, you are not under my mentorship. You are just a friend and we both advise each other. So moving on, uh, like uh, we just we were just talking before the show about Lucknow. So hometowns, they always beckon us. But what a real home is, is the basic question. Is a home made of bricks, bonded by cement with a few doors and windows? Does it also cover the alleys, the pockets of area and the city? Or is the home our body which is the abode of soul? As you hear Dr. Minakshi Mohan render her next poem, I'm sure a thousand questions will leak out from your mind. I request my dear, dear friend to render her poem. You are on mute, uh, Minakshi. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Neelam, for your very generous introduction of me. And thank you also for inviting me on this platform. It's really great. And, you know, and also for moderating the program. Thank you, Nivedita, for your technical support, which is very much needed, you know. And also, you know, all the panelists here today, it's an honor to be with you all today. And finally, thanks to all the audience who are there listening to us. So namaste, everybody. Um, um, today, I'm going to be reading my uh, first poem. It's called A Journey Home. But before I do that, I would like to share a, the cover picture of the book from where this, this poetry is. Here. This poetry, this poetry is, um, you know, was there. It's seek, can you see it called? It's called Seeking Home, edited by Dr. Sunil Sharma and Shaleen Singh. I don't have the books, so I'm just showing you the picture. And this is a this is uh, the cover is based on my painting, you know. And the name of the painting is a Journey Home. Uh, so the name of my poetry is also called a Journey Home. I borrowed it from Dr. Um, from Ms. Uh, Rabindranath Tagore's poem, A Journey Home. And I quoted him uh, before I before I start my poem. I would like to quote him. He says. I came out of the chariot of the first gleam of light and pursued my voyage through the wilderness of worlds, leaving my tracks on many a star and planet, my eyes straight far and wide before I shut them and said, here art thou. That's Rabindna Tagore from Journey Home. The name of my poem is also Journey Home. I dedicate it to my husband who passed away at a very young age um, by cancer, you know, so I lost him, but he's very much here with me. So this poem is dedicated to him. I was there when the Ganges came rushing, piercing the hearts of the snow clad Himalayas and shrouding my ashes in its bosom. The misty eyes of the seraph like clouds watched the serenade of streams, the chanting of the ancient priest, a long lost child was finally home. When a, with a student visa, the world of glitter and glory enchanted me. I crossed thousands of miles, left my mother, father, and a land of my birth to a new sunlight, a new country, my new home. I trekked the snow clad, snow sheath Colorado mountains, racing my bike to the highest peak skiing, camping with friends, my youth enwrapped in all colors of the rainbow, no black and white. In my physics lab, controlling the massive metallic magnificence of a cyclotron, a twist of the knobs and a million specks dancing, I was Zeus, all powerful. Accolades after my name, dauntless, daring, where the sky is the limit. I had miles and miles to go before I lay to rest. I had miles and miles to go before I lay to rest. Alas, alas, life is short 
On my sick bed, I thought of the young salmon migrating different streams, returning to the place of their birth. My ashes melted in the heart of the Ganges. Was it a journey home? Was it a journey home? Was my Nitya Shashwat soul ready for another migration? Nitya Shashwat is a Sanskrit word which means eternal, immortal. Thank you so much. Wow, wow, wow. That was splendid indeed. Thank you so much. Friend. I really mm -hmm. loved it. I really loved it. Thank you. Friends, today our amazing poets on the show have chosen really unique topics to speak about through their verses. The next poet who's going to render his poem is Arindam Roy, whom I found, fondly call Arindam Da, and the poem is about a sex worker. I invite you, Arindam Da, to render your first poem. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, uh, Neelam. I call her my little sis, and I've known her for many years now. And of course, I have another sibling here, Sunilji. I call him very fondly my brother. And of course, I've known all of you, and I met Sarah for the first time. And wonderful meeting Nivedita here in person again. And here's this poem uh, on a sex worker. I did a, a investigative story on the uh, trafficking, uh, women trafficking uh, from Purnia. And having met them, I would tell you that they were splendid people, splendid people. Here's the poem, a sex worker from a nowhere land. Her body is a temple, a site of sacred trade, where pleasure and desire meet in exchange that's often weighed. For many, she's a symbol of a life gone astray, but few stop to ponder the choices made along the way. Perhaps it was the money or the need to just survive that led her down this path that many cannot contrive. But in her heart, she knows that she's more than what they see, a woman with a story, a life that's far from free. She longs for love and kindness, for a world that understands that a body is not a commodity, but a soul with heart and hands. So next time you pass her by, don't judge or turn away, for she's a human being with a life that's led away. Thank you. Thank you, Da. Thank you. That was a very touching poem. You could really imagine the pain of the subject of your poem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now I shall be inviting another awesome poet who writes on a variety of themes and is and is extremely versatile. I think I find that deep connection with his poem since nature is also his favorite theme. Over to you, Sunil Sharma ji. Thank you very much for such a warm welcome. A pleasure to be here with the stalwarts, poets, activists, artists, whom I admire, respect, who are making value addition to literature. A global platform, Madam Neelam, my compliments. Each one of you is an outstanding contributor to the cause of fine writing. Respect, first of all, to all of you. The way I was listening to my favorite poets, I suppose we've lost connection. I think uh, Sunil ji is frozen. I think there is an internet connection problem. Let's wait for a second. Otherwise, uh, we'll, we'll move to the server. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think let's 
uh, move on and uh, once his connection stabilizes we'll invite him again yes. so friend i suddenly remembered the nursery rhyme tick tock tick tock merrily sings the clock it's time for work it's time for play so it sings throughout the day so what's your take on this poem dear nivedita <laughs> <laughs> okay uh thank you so much neera so i just want all of you to just visualize me being a teacher sitting in front of my laptop and teaching my children 2 years ago on the zoom just keep that picture in mind so tick tock tick tock the clock ticked away uncaring relentless the uncanny silence of the classroom was creating a suffocating ambiance this silence had a deep voice the voice that spelled lonesome thoughts gibberish that only inner self could decipher my thoughts lingered on the empty chairs the occupants of those chairs now just faces on my zoom screen chirping cheering like tiny avifonas sharing innocent feelings of missing school i wonder often how much have they suffered i ponder how can i do more for them it was time to see them again they joined slowly yet steadily each one ready to share their stories stories about their family pets and superheroes tears pricked the corners of my eyes adjusted to the new schedule they happily regale and retell oh the ticking clock again announces it's time to close the zoom session with a promise to see them again i close the session and wipe my eyes the silence engulfs my room again till the clock ticks and tells me to log in again thank you friends thank you nivi the poem is just like you a little humor a little sensitivity a little message loved it so sunil ji aapka uh, the way uh, it happened uh, it was just like uh, you reached the climax of the movie and uh, an interval is announced so yes, yes. <laughs> after the interval can we technical, have poem, some technical problem happened and now i have switched over to my mobile mobile yeah yeah <laughs> uh, then i will get the... it rectified but it's uh, how should i hold it that's the problem one second it happened for the first time no problems uh, the, <laughs> these issues uh, often uh, take place the course of love doesn't run smooth yeah <laughs> anyway <laughs> my apologies just i could not handle it it's not in my control also <laughs> but i immediately switched over to you know, this mobile version of steam yard so should i read or should i do yeah, it later yeah. yes no no we are waiting for you to read yes yes my apologies again for this unintended uh, this uh, disruption Uh, this is the book from which i am reading my poem it's called renew relocate a resto poems from australia and india edited by two close literary friends robert madox harley and jadeep sarang Uh, the first poem is a poetic response to the changed landscape to the canadian landscape it's called a renewal of another order here it goes dear friends a bud appears from the golden brown mulch unfolds a slow mystery an alchemy of nature a tiny rose dances from a circular spot 
near the sidewalk. A young immigrant back from the shift stops for a moment entranced by the divine sight buried in the corner lot midtown toronto thank you for your patient listening and appreciation wonderful wonderful thank you so much your poem leaves a deep imprint on everyone's mind thank it you it was indeed very nice <laughs> so friends we are all wanderers sometimes the soul wanders in far away lands on in the or in distant timeline which could even be imaginative however visiting different places always amazes you isn't it at least i always get enthralled and i've just come to know that our next poet saira also loves to travel so saira we would love to listen to any of your poems on the theme please thank you very much ms nivedi uh, neela uh, thank you everybody especially nivedita for inviting me to this wonderful platform it's a pleasure to meet you all and uh, saira technically means a happy traveler so i thought i will talk to you all about being a happy traveler i'm from the travel trade and uh, from the 90s i've always traveled worldwide and it's something that was so taken for granted till covid hit us and i realized how important it is how much we miss it when we take something for granted and so the poem here we go love thrives when you travel more adventures adrenaline and the who knows what next feels the sanctity of relationships our best behaviors are deep down vulnerabilities all reveal itself as we travel our comfort zones elasticate when our papers are not what the world deems it to be when we move even a millimeter from the rules all the forces zone in and we have but ourselves to zoom into we learn new lessons and make new resolutions we rely we understand value monetary values network values protocol values and the sheer beauty of preparedness we may dream up many a rose tinted lemonade dreams and yet live but on pistachio green grounded earth and so our subconscious must align with our conscience travel to feel feel awake alive and uncomfortable experience the rawness of radical terrains of human endeavors and progress time tech and art crisp air ice cold fingers salt sweat and sand twirl in a skirt or muffler up it is all but a visual human collage Oh, what a privilege it is to be here, post the COVID era. Cheers to you, me, us, and life. It is but fleeting, yet it is so full. Poetry. Very, very nice poem. Very nice poem. And I hope you travel soon to India and to Mumbai and we get to meet. Thank you know, you. Sunilji ditched, ditched me. He just left Mumbai before I could come here. <laughs> okay dear friends it's time to now invite our dear dear moderator and uh, before she renders her poem and i will just read out something i just found that pain is a complex experience that differs greatly from person to person it can be mild it can be unnoticeable it can be explosive and knowing neelam i know her poems are almost always explosive so neelam you are welcome to share what is your take on the feeling of pain you mean to say i'm i should be ready to explode you need explode so well my poem is from my latest poetry book the lost mint taste it this has just been released uh the title of my poem is the pain train on the railway line 
right in front of a house comes to a screeching halt. Sound that echoes is terrifying, and the child, already so lonely, runs away from the window, climbs down those three steps. She falls several times, gets up, and tries again. She finally slips from the steps, but is happy because she lands on the ground and she can now move around freely amidst the trees that surround the bungalow. The wound, they don't hurt her. For she is already in a state of emotional ache. Oh, loneliness can be so painful. In the garden, she is so happy to find those crawling earthworms. She begins to count them, trying to recollect the numbers. Are they 18 number or is it 81? Suddenly her glance falls on the pomegranate tree. It has a fruit at her eye level. She plucks it and sitting down under the guava tree tries to break it open. The garden indeed is a place of infinite possibilities and she is only too eager to explore them. Suddenly she hears the voice of her mom. Anita, could you please sit with your brother? I have a lot of work to do in the kitchen. She knows that it isn't a request, but a command. Bidding temporary adieu to her ecstatic world of green, she goes inside the house, holding her mom's fingers. Mom sees her wound on the knee and inquires about it. She smiles and nods. It's okay. I'm not hurt. As she sits down, looking at the big, handsome eyes of her baby brother, her eyes are tearful once again. It hurts. Hurts a lot. After all, he's only one year younger. Just that, he's a boy. Just that, he is a boy. So that was my poem, The Pain. What a beautiful poem, Neelam. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, dear. So, moving ahead. I've touched pristine nature very often and felt its velvety trace in me that has made me smile. It's in nature that my past soul gets drunk and remains in its inebriated state for days to come. I sing, dance, and remain in a trance, lost in nature. Well, these are also lines uh, from my same poetry collection. And I'm sure that most of the poets on, in the show can find themselves in nature. Most of Sunil Sharma ji, it would be a pleasure to listen to another of your poem on nature. Thank you very much. Uh, the second poem is titled Luminous Signs. The sky reddens, the earth is drenched in orange, waters become scarlet, dark is melting slowly, light diffused as long streaks. This luminous region, this in between R is dawn. The time when hopes stir, the day is not fully formed and the world wakes up to fresh possibilities, the way Sisyphus looks at the ascent in a ceaseless play described by Albert Camus for the coming generations. Thank you very much once again. What a powerful imagery. Wonderful, Sunilji. Wonderful. So, moving ahead. 
shed all the thrust upon thoughts in the mirror you'll see a vibrant you smile and spread gaiety all around sing and dance in a, in your own you being your, yourself exercising your choice having your own use is a very important move towards self development isn't it what are your views on it saira ah, i think you've written something about it isn't it please yes. render the poem tiny little bit here we go i struggle to be a part of me wakes up to the hauntingly beautiful sita kalyana wants to draw a nice rice column at dawn do a quick darshan at my altar and then start the day another part of me wants to learn to ride the bike and play the saxophone roam the streets in my over the knee boots the harley the, la- the le- leather jacket and wind in my hair as i go on creating art sustaining self through life a part of me wants to abandon the roles that thrust me to domesticity how i loathe her and how she clings on to me for dear life planning routine the productivity wheels of everyday life on a healthy happy day how i struggle to be me over to you what a powerful poem very well written very well written saira loved it thank you peace is something we all crave for whether it is peace in the world in the environment or inside our hearts maybe external peace is something for which poets can only pour their heart out through poetry but mostly they do find the inner peace simply by writing isn't it however there is a different perspective shown to us by arindamda he talks about binaries of peace mm, at present okay. i'm left clueless what it is all about and i would like you to quench my query with your poem thank you neelam uh, sis and here is my poem uh, i'm reminded of the entire legacy of poets between the wars Auden, Eliot, Yeats, and many more. They were writing between the two wars, and uh, the war still continues in various forms in various parts of the country, of the world rather. And uh, this is what this poem tries to talk about: binaries of peace, snug on its mother's bosom, a child sleeps peacefully, unaware of the missile attacks or the bombings. in war ravaged ukraines it could be taiwan soon the infant's father a young soldier sleeps peacefully in his grave strange binaries of peace in the silence of a full moon night the moon boom the moonbeam is still in its mirror the large placid lake the calm eyes of arishi in deep meditation at another time and place a sage poet composes hymns of peace and harmony a shanti part praying for peace of the living and those departed known and unknown with or without funeral rites he prays for the peace of a grass blade fountains forests sees peace for the earth and the great void peace for mankind gods demons peace for all shanti peace for all thank you oh that was a wonderful poem and my query is really quenched and <laughs> now i understand what it was all about thank you thank you so much thank you so so friend poets including me are very strange creatures they find words and stories everywhere be it in animate things animals or humans imagination is their forte now who could think of stories watching clouds well our dear poet minakshi did and i request you dear minakshi to render your first uh, your second poem please thank you so much neelam okay yes my the title of my second poem is vagabond clouds 
Under the vast span of the blue horizon, I watched some white homeless clouds. They drifted aimlessly as vagabonds, floating slowly, aimlessly, with no destination. My three-year-old granddaughter, sitting next to me, shook my hand and pointed out, look, there is Winnie the Pooh in the hundred acre woods. Soon her gaze shifted in a different direction and she said out loud, wow, look at that old man reading a book. And I looked up, but for me, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel came alive. For me, the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel came alive. Two hands reaching towards each other. Was that God guiding humanity? Who says? Who says clouds are vagabonds? They have many stories to tell. My granddaughter had her story and I had mine. I smiled as those light, delicate, billowing mass romped around knitting many stories on the celestial zone. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, if we were to uh, translate uh, your poem, it would be some uh, something like Avara Badal, which could Badal. be a movie name. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. So moving on, the souls of good friends mingle, not only through the through the articulated words. More often than not, they connect through the gap between the unspoken and unheard. So friends, uh, do, uh, do you think that your friends help in your undertaking of the journeys of your life? I'll let my friend Nivi answer this question through her poem. Nivi. Thank you so much, Neelam. And I dedicate my second poem to all of you present here because it's an honor and a privilege to share the stage with all of you here. And uh, I'm sure you will get the metaphor in the poem yourself, being such eminent poets. Charming comrades. Soulful lilt of the meandering stream. Serenity of the valley. Born homie of the bushes and boulders. Euphony of the ambience magical. As I found my real calling, I floated on the flow of words. I delved deep into the open sea. The craft sprouted slowly. A few unsteady steps taken, miles lying ahead and yonder. Sclipping my whims at the alfresco, said who? A rolling stone gathers no moss. Encounters elite embolden my path. Trudging steadily, spinning words, charming comrades steady the quill, filling up pages with imagery. Climb a steep, good company I keep, and miles to trudge before the leap. Thank you, wonderful. dear friends. Wonderful, wonderful. How sweet. Thank so, you so much. We are equally happy to be your friends. <laughs> so sweet. And this smiling little lovely lady here has lately added another feather to her cap and a crown on her head to say that she is a very newly, newly appointed mother in law. And uh, <laughs> we know how difficult it is to say, even if there are short buys to our own flesh and blood. So Neelam has written something very touching about her daughter, as she has, we say in India, Jab Vidai Hui. So I am so keen to hear what she wrote about her lovely, beautiful daughter. Neelam, welcome. Thank you, dear Nivi. Uh, you know, it's a double departure because uh, she'll also be moving out of the country. So everything with every emotion, that day inside my heart, I have written this poem to you, daughter. In a few days, you shall depart. You shall be going very far away. I simply wish to tell you, I just loved you my way. The best I might not have been. Well, I was near in that fray. 
simple honesty was in my heart i just loved you my way in the evening i might have scolded but cuddled at the end of the day i hope that you understood why i just loved you my way the thrill when you came out of my womb the zest of telling you a story a day the entire happiness moved my heart i just loved you my way on my heart memories get printed i think they shall always stay that way i shall watch those pictures of happy moments i just loved you my way i may weep loudly after you go but till then i shall with calmness stay an emotional bundle is what you got as a mom i just loved you my way i hope that the sky you shall touch fly higher and higher do not stray my sacrifices of life shall twinkle i just loved you my way and love and the last word no expectations no claim love never demands anyway i may not speak my action shall say i just loved you my way i just loved you my way so touching <laughs> so that's it that life like <laughs> but that's life and life has to keep moving yes so friends oh, with this we would come to uh, we are here to an end of our wonderful session as such sessions are always wonderful with wonderful friends isn't it nivi yes always <laughs> 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 so i thank all our fantastic poets for finding time to be with us this evening and render their beautiful beautiful poem i think it was a very wonderful session thank you for I lovely being here lovely being here thank you everyone thank, thank you for inviting me thank you for the opportunity met all of you here lovely thank you so much thank you thank you Thank you. And I also thank our lovely audience who joined us in large numbers. Thank you so much. Oh yes. Oh yes. And goodbye. Goodbye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night from India. <laughs> <laughs>